everyone, this is Konzel here and I finally have the Al Haitam Math Guide 2 ready. So essentially I'm gonna go deep 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 in details. This this is gonna be a long video. <laughs> Even by my standards, this is gonna be a long video. So do uh prepare yourself a hot beverage, sit back, and yeah. Let me run it through with you guys. And just to show you guys what we are gonna how many details there are? Yeah. It's more than my usual. This should be the longest. In terms of the number of sections. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk about the latest changes because uh since the changes this we have dropped, I actually finished this right up on the same day itself. But it took me much longer to do the rest of this. But nevertheless, let me share the changes and uh just quickly summarize exactly how the impact will be like. We'll talk about aggro spread comps, some of the options available for uh, our item as an on-field DPS. Uh, we'll talk about rotations. I actually have three different rotations that uh, we are exploring here. And energy-wise, we also have... Uh, it's actually two in each of this section because of the nature of the rotation. And then you have like the number of spreads, the main stats, and yeah, rotation comparisons on different constellations as well. Our item performance and even our artifact comparison. Manage to squeeze that in. Alright, so without further ado, let me just quickly start. First off, latest changes. Oh, it's very straightforward. For the Nomad Attack Talent, his charge attack was uh, reduced. So instead of 130.8%, it's 104.7%. Uh, Technically speaking, if you look at it percentage wise, right, wise, right, relative wise, right, it's actually a bit nerf, but since his charge attack is like a very small contributor to his overall DPS, this is fine. I guess they just don't want you to do N2Cs repeatedly or N3Cs repeatedly, whatever permutation you want to do. Now, the E has a huge, huge amount of changes slapped onto it. And it's a huge nerf to his E rush damage because from 666.4% E arm, it has now dropped to 266.6%. So instead of double, it's less than the attack percentage. And if you remember what I mentioned previously, right? Your EM percentage should always be double of your attack for it to be a 50-50. So now it drops drastically. Okay, drastically. And the one mirror projection damage is also nerfed. It's also a bit nerfed percentage-wise. Uh, relative percentage-wise. But two mirror and three mirror actually gets a very, very, very slight nerf. Very slight nerf. So I think it's clear, right? I think it's clear what this change uh, signifies. Oyoverse really wants you to go on field DPS on him, especially with the three mirror optimized method I mentioned, and maybe two mirror as well. Uh, some type of permutation of it, but yeah, three mirror would be ideal. Now, while I'm, while I'm happy that my analysis on his optimized playstyle is more or less proven to be aligned with Oyoverse design, that huge draw in Ian's scaling on his E rush damage is really still pretty painful. Like, in order for, I guess, in order for her 3 mirror on view damage to shine, the setup can't do too much damage. I don't know, but right now, uh, it's really bad for this. But at least, there is a focus on the uh, 3 mirror and 2 mirror. To me, 2 mirror not be enough is just to make sure that the whole maintaining of the uh, 3 mirrors is less punishing. Since you do get a momentary drop in mirrors every 4 seconds, but... If you do it correctly, you should not be triggering a 2 mirror projection. By the time the projection attack happens, it should be back to 3 mirror. Yeah, technically speaking. But uh, there may be an alternate rotation for 2 mirror at C0. But it's only like 2 mirror for 4 seconds and you will go back to 3 mirror as well. Okay? But I, I won't be covering that because I'm not 100% sure that would be great. Plus, it's only applicable for C0, not, not from C2 onwards, really. Alright, so anyway, that's the E. Let's talk about Q. I think this is the one that makes people mad, right? Because his Q instance damage, the EM scaling power of it has also dropped drastically from 413.4% EM to 165.4% EM. So I can say this again. By nerfing his Q damage, Hoyo vs is again pushing for the 3 mirror on field DPS as the ultimate play start, right? But it's still the, the quiz option is still there. You don't get me wrong, the quiz option is still there. Why? Even with the nerf, his Q still provides a search in damage. It's still there. It still provides that search in damage. But it's a lot lower now. 
I mean, technically speaking, it's still a surge in damage, but maybe it's not as big as like uh, a few hundred k. Yeah. Oh, and in fact, if you notice, the drops are always in the EM skilling, so it does seem to me that Hoyoverse is also trying to lower his EM skilling, at least for his E rush and Q. Because if you think about it, right, he has his uh, EM skill is very very heavy. His other than the talent multipliers, you have the uh, weapon giving you bone damage bonus based on EM, the signature weapon. I know, I know the signature weapon. But besides that, there is also his kit, his passive that's also giving EM skilling bone damage bonus to his projection and his Q. So I guess that's why his multipliers are getting reduced to such an extent. So in relative comparison now, I'll say 2 mirror, 3 mirror does better and gets bigger benefit from EM2. Let's talk about passive changes to the passive next. Mysteries laid bare. Each point of our items EM will increase the damage dealt by projection attacks and Q by 0.09%. So instead it's 0.12%, now it's 0.09%. Maximum damage increase is also dropped. The cap is dropped from 100 to 90. So technically speaking, 100 to 90 is still acceptable, barely acceptable. But I said the biggest issue here is that you actually now need 1000 EM instead of 834 EM to get a max cap bonus, which is very bad because it's like almost a additional EM means that piece, right? Almost it's a 166 EM difference. Well, uh, EM means that is 187, so that's why I say it's almost like a means that EM change. So, what this means is that previously you can reach the cap with just Nahida EM buff. Plus the EM sense along with some uh, EM E base EM rolls, and uh, if you don't have Nahida signature, then a couple of upgrades. If you have Nahida signature weapon, then you don't need any upgrades at all. Just base EM roll enough. But now, you actually need C two L item to hit the cap, unless you use EM goblet, which is why I I I'm actually not as upset about the talent multipliers than I am for the passives. The pass this passive change is bad. It's worse than the talent multipliers. I'll be upfront with you guys. In terms of like optimizing his damage. Now the other change that did happen is his C2. Now I know that uh people see the version some of it is 40, right? So uh, let me just explain. 40 was the English version. 80 in the Chinese version was already there. Before the English version had a chance to be updated to uh from 40 to 80. The Chinese version has changed from 80 to 50. So eventually the English will be 50 as well. I'm not sure whether it's 50 now or it will be changed next week. But either way, yeah, Chinese will always be the first uh, wave or first change. The Chinese description. So what this means now is that now C2 only gives you 200 EM instead of 320 at 4 stats. And in the stagger banner I mentioned previously it's like 150, 200 and 100. So yeah. I know a lot of people are saying that he's nerfed to Oblivion. Oblivion. Uh, let's see how it goes, okay? So my thoughts personally, it's definitely painful to see so many nerfs. But like I, like I said earlier, right? the talent multiplier changes are actually changes I can stomach. Because I did think it was too high to begin with. But I didn't want to mention that until doing like the math and showing the figures. But yeah, obviously I didn't do that in time and the changes have come. And I can still see what they are doing here because they are trying to push for the 3 mirror on field DPS playstyle because people are too over focused on the kill damage to be honest. So it seems Hoyoverse is uh, basically the Hoyoverse has decided to make his design playstyle very obvious with this and probably also to differentiate from Kerchin. The playstyle meaning you focus on projection attacks rather than Kerchin where it's like a uh, mix of the whole set. But my biggest issues with the nerfs is actually the A4 passive, like I mentioned, coupled with the C2 nerf. Because first, they make it such that you need C2 to optimize, right? And hit the cap, to optimize and hit the damage bonus cap for the A4 passive. But, uh, oh, obviously that's without sacrificing your crit stats and uh, without having to use the EM goblet. But then again, they also nerf C2 at the same time. They make C2 necessary to optimize and hit the cap, but in C2 at the same time. Uh, it feels bad, right? And considering how situational C1 is, it makes the whole pulling for C2 less, less desirable. And I can tell you guys, Hoyoverse already knows their stuff, because they reduce C2 to the point where it's just enough to hit the cap. 
at 200 EM, it really hits the cap at a, like a more or less just enough point. If you want to know the figure, it was like 1037 EM. So if if <laughs> sorry, if it had been 320 EM, at least you would get like what uh 1157 EM. Now I know EM does have like a diminishing return, but that's for the reactions. We have multipliers. We have talent multipliers, guys. So it still feels bad for the C2. Oh, and his C2 kind of motivates you to shorten the rotation because his rotation also has plus 2 second from waiting for Q to generate mirrors. This plus 2 second is while I was doing his rotations, right? I really feel felt that this, this plus 2 second is really, really bad for his uh, DPS. I'll talk more about it later. So hopefully, Hoyoverse is going with S3 n on the nerfs this time round. To explore how far they can nerf L item before tweaking and buffing in future beta changes. Okay, I really hope this is the case. And not to mention with his change, uh, this they, they are making his intended play style very clear. So here's to hoping he can get buffed in future beta versions, but we also have to see, I'll, I'll show you guys later in the math, how he actually performs now based on the latest changes. And you will be pretty surprised with the results, I will say. Alright, now let me move on. That was only the first session, I took 10 minutes. I have 14 sessions. Okay, so anyway, second session here is the Agra Spread Com. Let's talk about the variants, right? So obviously Nahida is the best choice for a dendry, Dendro Battery slash EM Buffer slash Sub DPS. She does all three of these. Now you can also de use DMC or Cole as the budget replacers for sure. Just know that you give lesser EM buff, obviously. Uh, sub DPS not that great as well. Uh, I mean, uh, compared to Nahida's Tri Karma, which actually hits pretty hard. Now in this comp, Nahida should be using 4 DM, unless you want to give it to one of the electro characters like Cookie. But uh, I think it's better for Nahida to be using 4 DM because Cookie can use Tenacity to buff our item because they just lower his EM skilling so the attack buff from the tenacity would be very nice not to mention uh, tenacity on cookie is one of the buffs that can last longer okay now I have them then drop in that's obvious right damage and the spreads Yai Miko obviously I'm going to use Yai Miko in the aggra spread comp this is like the best comp for now and this is pretty straightforward, right? She skills off the EM provided by the team buff, the dendro resonance on top of the already nice damage itself. And then you have the flex electro slot here. So preferably I would want a healer, Cookie or Dory. Or if you don't care about heal, just one more damage, use Fisher. Cookie gives you healing plus electro skills of the bonus EM. And she also helps your Nahida to hit the 250 EM buff. Especially if you are building your Nahida with crit stats. And also the fact that she's not using 4GD in this comp. Which means your EM is actually lower than it uh, usually would be. Right? Because 4GD is something like 180 EM in a uh, double dendro, double electro comp. But if you use 4DM, it's, uh, you, you lose 180 EM. It's quite detrimental on the EM loss. So, in order for her Q, the 250 EM buff to be hit, Cookie actually feels that role beautifully. Especially Cookie with uh, Sifo's Moonlight. Like seriously, I, I really really like this weapon now. Like this is such a good 4 star weapon. It's better than Favonius for Cookie, to be honest. And I'll show you guys in terms of energy generation section later, the energy session. But basically I can tell you my Cookie with Dendro Resonance now with a Sifos can actually hit the 1k EM for Nahida Siemba. And yet at the same time Sifos also gives you the similar effect, or in fact it's better in this comp. This is actually better than Favonius. I mean, I'm kind of giving away my, my math results, right? But yeah, it's really good. Yeah, obviously, you can use Dory too, but Cookie is much better. Now, alternatively, if you don't have some of the characters mentioned above, I think for a budget version, L Hyten plus Yao Yao plus Beidou plus Fisher would be the. Uh, it would be a decent, decent option. I mean, other than the obvious 4 star and 5 star difference, right? I call this budget because. Your I L your L high term is not going to have high EM plus high crit stats concurrently. <coughs> because Yao Yao has no EM team buffs. This is why I don't like Yao Yao for L high term by the way. What's the EM team buff? Her C4 is giving EM to herself, not to the team. What's going on here? 
and she has zero EM skilling as well for a Dendro character. What's going on? Again, what is going on? Okay, but uh, I guess to be fair, Kole also, also has no EM skilling, but at least Kole is able to use allergy. So she actually does a decent EM team buffer role. If you have allergy, obviously. So yeah. I, I, I don't really like the, the uh Yao Hyden Yao Yao comp, but if you if you don't have the characters that I mentioned earlier, right? This this is doable, right? Because you have your double uh, classic electro combo, electric pair, electro pair, along with a Yao Yao for the heals and I Hyden. Our alternative would be say uh something like Tinari with your Hyden or Quick Sword Roll or even Zhongli replacing say Cookie. That's doable as well. Okay, it's only replacing cookie is doable as well. So that's the comp. Let's talk about rotation. Uh, this, this is going to be a long one. So first off, you'll see here I have three different types of rotation. We have a 23 second, 19 second, and 18 seconds. Now, although I say that the 23 second is 0, C0+, plus, I also have two C2+, plus, two different variants of a C2+. Plus. Technically speaking, there's nothing stopping you to use these two, either of these two on C0 as well. But I'll do the map comparison later to talk about like which rotation will be better. Okay. But basically for C0 plus rotation, your item E is used at the 4 5 seconds from some mirrors and likewise for CA by an eighth time. So I've actually covered this in the map guide one before, right? It's all about casting the E or the CA at a point where you your mirror expires and then you put you get another mirror and make it three mirrors. So you kind of extend your three mirror duration. Now obviously this is theory crafting, so the normal attack stream may change upon release. But based on current gameplay, the timing should match for the above. So like the two seconds, remember I talked about the two seconds waiting time for the queue to generate mirrors? That's why there's an entry physical here. So N1 to N2 to N3. We assume that by then you should get the mirrors from the queue. Then the next N5 will be the projection attacks. And then you have the E plus M4 to S10 and do projection attacks again. Likewise C A plus M4. So it, it kind of matches nicely, right? E plus M4 is your 4 second block. CA plus M4 is another 4 second block. Kinda. Okay? Now, obviously, like I said, it may change upon release. I need to test it out. But for the math, this is how I'm going with, okay? To be honest, the tricky thing, the most, the trickiest thing about getting this rotation to work cor uh, correctly is really about getting the third mirror up after one expires as soon as possible. Such that, at least such that you don't trigger a two mirror projection attack instead of a three mirror projection attack. Okay, that's the key point here. Now, so that's the rotation. Now you can also do a Nahida second E after cooking E. This point here. Okay. If reapplication is required. Because we all know, right? Nahida E disappears once your enemy dies. You only have to reapply again. So that's where this is a good point to insert the Nahida E because the cooldown will be ready by then as well. Okay. Now at C0, I'll tell you guys the on field DPS are high term actually takes out a lot of on field time. You have your two second two second queue animation where he's leading up to unleash, and then you have another two second for the queue after unleashing your queue to generate three mirrors. If you are seeing the gameplay, it's very straightforward. Okay, two sec in that two seconds where you are we are waiting, right? It's not like you're not dealing any damage because the queue is at that point dealing its damage. But your L Hyten is free to do any action during that time. Which is why it kind of feels bad that we are just doing normal attacks, right? And physical normal attacks, not then Joe, it feels normal attacks. But if you think about it, that two seconds in the first place, you're already doing a lot of damage. Joe damage is going to trigger a lot of spreads. If you're also doing then Joe normal attacks, it might run into a risk of hitting that uh, 2 per enemy per 0 0.5 second reaction ICD. It may, but it's not that easy to hit that. I'm just saying that it may hit, but theoretically speaking, it's not that easy. It may hit, it may hit, okay? But because of all this, right, it's 2 seconds plus 2 seconds plus a 12 second of the 3 mirror DPS, which is 16 seconds just from a high term. So, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit too long. I mean, it's a it's a aggro spread comp, so we are, we are talking about Quicken, right? So the good thing is that Quicken can last long enough until the 16 seconds. At least for the case of a high term, it's not as bad as Sino, where some, some, in some cases the Quicken doesn't even last that long. Uh, in certain comps, depending on the Dendro character. 
but it's still pretty bad to stretch a rotation that long. Okay. Now another option, obviously, for uh, a C zero L item is that if your Yai is already very stacked, you can actually cut four seconds from your C zero L item to Yai Q plus E X three, right? Which gives you more damage since he has a Q has no I C D. But the rotation then becomes a little awkward because your Yai E X three is a bit. It, it, it doesn't match perfectly. Simply put, it doesn't match perfectly. Because <laughs> the item still takes too much time. Like, by the time Yae is ready, our item is still doing his stuff. Yeah, so that, that's the, the tricky part here. Okay? Oh, okay. Like I said, I have a lot of points on the rotation. So, at C2+, plus, we can lower his on field time for 16 seconds to 12 seconds to utilize the four steps of C2. As well as actually shortening the rotation, so as to refresh your YAE, your team buffs, etc. Make sure that the rest of the team are still doing stuff. Because that's very important for your aggro spread comp, by the way. So, after looking at the rotation in detail, along with the latest changes requiring higher E on him to hit the damage bonus cap, right? I would actually recommend the shorter rotation in 19 seconds rather than the staggered C2 EM buff I mentioned in MFK1. Remember in MFK1, I was saying that it might be better to do staggered C2 EM buff along with like the uh, 12 second of a uh, 3 mirror window, DPS window. But now what I'm trying to say here is it's actually better to go to 8, sec eight seconds with the full EM buff. Number one, because of how long he's, how much of a time he's already taking on fuel. Number two is also because of the recent changes on the uh, damage bonus scale, he's A4 passive. I mean, if you really think about it, right? They are indirectly increasing C2 value this way, right? Because they made the rotation so long and there's an unfortunate two second wave for Q mirror generation. Although there's a chance of hitting the reaction cap if there's no two second wait for the mirror generation. Uh, but still. Yeah, it still feels bad, right? You either wait two seconds or you waste spirits because of reaction ICD. Feels bad, feels bad. Now, alternatively, at C2+, plus, another alternative rotation, which is the 18 second rotation that I mentioned here. Essentially, what we are doing is we kind of lower the duration by using E right after Q. And then we spend our normal attacks and we do a 2 mirror projection damage in the 2 seconds before the Q's mirror generation happens. Compared to if we had just two normal attacks with uh, entry physical. But this also starts to trigger off the one mirror, the mirrors one second earlier, by the way. Because the first mirror is going to be from the E instead of the two seconds after Q. So you can think of the E as one second after Q instead of two seconds after Q. So that's why the uh, our header on fuel time in this alternative rotation is 11 seconds instead of 12 seconds. But the trade is obviously that one of the projection attacks, one of the four projection attacks is two mirrors instead of three mirrors. But I'll do a math comparison to, to see whether it's worthwhile pursuing this 18 second rotation as versus the 19 second. Technically speaking, you can follow C2 plus rotation if you have C0, and I mentioned this earlier. And so again, I will do the math comparison compare to show you guys the difference. That's why I said today's video is going to be a long one, because there's a lot of variance that I'm doing a lot of comparison on. And it also took me longer to do this because of, because of exactly because of this idea, it took me longer to do this math guide. Prepare this math guide. Now, at C6, you should always go with the lower duration. This should be pretty clear, right? Because you want the four, so called four mirrors effect. Now, alternatively, you could choose to uh, use the limited mirror generation to extend the C6 effect instead of maintaining the tree. Because if you really want to maintain the C6 effect, right, you, you can't afford to get a three mirror. You can't. It will be three mirror with two mirror. Because you're not as you're not using your mirror to extend the three mirrors. You are using your mineral generation for to extend the C6 effect instead. Okay? Now, to make things simple for myself, my math, I'll just go with the six seconds of the C6 effect instead of trying to go for something like nine seconds or twelve seconds, whatever the case is. Huh? Since it covers most of the six seconds covers most of the eight seconds. So I think it's fine. And so more straightforward. Now, Yae Q can obviously be used when you go for the occasional L item quit spot. So you kind of do like two hard hitting kills for a nice searching damage. And you can throw in a C6 Nahida into the mix as well. 
she have a lot of surge damage in this this comp. You can go like this, or you can go pure surge damage, which obviously you have energy issues after. But yeah, you know the option is there. Yep. You notice that my Yai Q is not being used here because we simply do not have the time in the rotation to do it. But it's fine because, like I said, it becomes like a alternative rotation. Like for example, uh, again, it's it's like what I mentioned, in Mephite one, right? Certain combat situation, if you don't care about energy after, you just go ahead and and use your AI Q, use your item Q. You, you just imagine if you use your Ahadan as a quick sword, right? It will take a lot lesser time. It's like an E, C, A, and then your Q. And you go back to E, I, A, use her Q as well. And then you, you switch back to using the... Uh, probably not Y, A, Q, because Y, A, Q will hit reaction ICD. Yeah, probably not Y, A, Q. But, but uh, maybe a Nahida E to reapply Dendro first, and then Y, A, Q. And then Y, A, E. To, re to replace the turrets again. So it's it's definitely doable. Like the search comp that I'm talking about. Okay, so that's with regards to the rotation. Let me talk about energy. I'll try to go faster here. So energy wise, uh, obviously because I have like a 12 second. The 23 seconds is 12 seconds of a uh, 3 mirror. The 19 seconds and 18 seconds is 8 seconds of 3 mirror. That's a rotation is slightly different, but that's why there's also one second difference. So this is the energy situation for the 12 second rotation. All of this is just energy from the skills. Okay. Not the energy out from part enemies. Enemies will be about 10 energy from uh, enemies for average. On average, some scenarios less, some scenarios more. But effectively, if you see here, right? My energy math here, for at least for this first section, because it's with Sifos on Cookie, is assuming Cookie is using R5 Sifos and is able to give 20% ER to team members. <coughs> I, the actual ER on the characters are 100 base ER on your high term, 154 ER on your IA, which is the uh, so called pretty standard and what I recommend, 140 to 145, or 140 to 150. And then you also have 100 ER on Nahida base. But you see here it's 120, 124, 120. Why? Because of Sephos. Sephos is giving us 20, 20, 20, and 66 to Cookie. Yeah, you can also go 100 ER on Cookie, by the way. Go just, if you're using Sephos, just go full EM. Like, in not every other state other than EM, and maybe HP percentage. So, uh, just just to be clear, right? I know the energy looks really good, the situation, right? Because we are all, re all able to get energy fully just from, from their skills, except for Yae, but Yae is fine. We are not using her Q every rotation, only every other rotation. But I just want to let you guys know that I'm already being conservative here because I did not include the fourth prop of Nahida's energy generation. Technically speaking, if the Trikama mark lasts long enough, the end, what's the name? Seek of Kanda, if it lasts long enough, right, you actually get four instances of the energy generation. But in my math, throughout, I will only use three. So it's being a little conservative. In fact, it might also be two if you don't reapply Nahida E. Right? So, anyway, I'm just adding a dose of reality or being conservative here. Okay, just so you know. So like I said, energy situation is very very comfortable. You hit full energy even without energy from enemies, uh, except for Yae, but we are also not using Cookie's Q, right? Because I don't have to. If you are using Favonius, there's value in using Cookie's Q so as to make sure that you hit the proverb, uh, you hit the Favonius effect while Cookie is still on fuel. But if you are using Sifos, you don't need to do that at all. That's awesome. Uh, you can use the ISQ every arrow rotation if you want to, as per what I mentioned, it will give you longer E duration and more particles. But L item needs to go 8 seconds. Okay? So let's look at 8 second energy situation next. Yes, still pretty good, right? Look at this. I mean, in all the EIA one. But L item, less than 10 energy away, less than 10 energy away, less than 10 energy away. But this is expected because you have lower duration of projection attacks, so that's mean that also means lower energy generation for your high, high term. 
But even with all that, right, we're still doing okay with the energy situation. 100 base ER, 20 ER from the R5 Sifos, and what do we have? 62.4 energy versus 70 energy for our item. 45 versus 50 to 9 heat R. 57 versus 60 for cookie. It's awesome. This, whatever gap that you see here, can easily be filled by energy from enemies. But one thing I want to say is that the Al Haida and Nahida's energy is is actually the energy situation is very dependent on energy generation of Nahida's E. Reapplication of E is very important for the battery effect, not just for the damage. So ideally, if you can do it, do it right after cooking E, provided new enemies spawn by then. Uh, depending on the combat situation, I would say that the uh, the damage before that should be able should be able to. Get some new enemies for you to reapply your E. Okay? Now, obviously, you can play safe and just go 110 base ER on your item. Because 110 is still covered by base rules. Good enough. For L item, unfortunately, the, the highest base cover coverage of uh, ER you can get is uh, 10 or 13 if you if you get high rules. Because the rest of the the uh, base rules need to go to the yeah, stats like EM, attack, CR, CD. Okay. So this is with Sephos. Now obviously if you have R1 Sephos, then you just half the amount. Right? Instead of 120 ER, 110 ER that you are. Instead of 20 ER, you're giving to the team. It's 10 ER that you're giving to the team. Simple as that. Okay. Now let's talk about Favonius. Because I know I know that not many people will have Sephos. But I did recommend getting that weapon when I was talking about uh, Nilo, right? So, suppose turns out to be really, really good on Cookie. I really like this weapon for Cookie. And I'm going to talk more about it in this section here. But before that, let me show you guys for Vornius so that you know how it works. Uh, how for Vornius fares versus Cookie. Oh, sorry, not Cookie. Sephos. So, I mean, it's not bad, right? I mean, everyone still has sufficient energy. But this is the 12 second rotation and we are taking the same base ER so you can see it's the same result it's technically speaking the same result because your energy situation is still very comfortable but you do notice that the energy is slightly lower like with Sephos right I have sent 2.6 51.1 61.8 basically it's always more Slightly more, but now we are slightly below. So with that, right? How about eight seconds? If you look at eight seconds for Cookie using a Favonius, you see now that we actually need 110 ER and 110 ER on Nahida. You need a lot more EIA, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's fine. Let's not not, not talk about EIA yeah, uh for this particular case. So the Higher than ER is to make it such that the energy situation still is pretty good. I mean, higher ER should be doable, but I just to give you guys a perspective, right? If you have higher ER on your item, your cookie is using for bonus based on my rotation that I mentioned earlier. Effectively, you actually need eleven energy from enemies if you have higher ER on your item, so it's it's a little tight. And if enemies, if you meet enemies who give very little energy. Your rotation will not be as smooth. So, I'll say I'll definitely recommend 110 ER yeah, if you're uh, using Favonius on Cookie. Oh, uh, but the thing, the, I really, really, really like Sifos because it allows you to get 10 base ER lower, but it's not a huge difference, right? But the biggest boon or the biggest advantage of it is that it helps your Cookie in going full EM. You hit the 1000 EM for Nahida's kill EM buff. Allowing your Nahida to use Dendro Gobbler and focus on crit stats like, or even allowing your Nahida to use 4DM. So I gotta say I'm starting really starting to like Sephos for Cookie. And not to mention you also don't need crit rate with Sephos. So it makes the artifact building even easier with Sephos. Ah, I really like this weapon. Hi, hey, it's perfect for Cookie man. Alright, so that's the energy situation, so I hope it's clear. I know it's slightly longer than uh usual. I think it should be helpful. So let's talk about number of spreads for just L item. So you get two spreads from a uh, zero mirror queue, one from the E rush, 
Now, within every 4 seconds of 3 mirror, you should get 2 plus 1 or 1 plus 2, whatever the case, it kind of alternates uh, from a three, from 3 mirror projection and tats plus 2 spreads from either a uh, M5 or a M4C depending on the the point of the rotation. If you remember my C0, there's M5 and M4C as well. Yeah. So total for 8 seconds of the 3 mirror would be like 13 seconds 13 spreads. If it's 12 seconds of 3 mirror, you get 18 spreads. So it feels like a lot more spreads, right? But like I said, the rotation gets a bit too long, your team GPS falls off uh, pretty greatly. So it's actually a pretty decent amount of spreads. So if you want to know ICD, assume for the map above, uh, do refer to important notes and assumptions, which I'll clearly run through next. So, uh, actually there's no difference from that in the math guide one. So if you know, want to know the ICD, then just pause and read, uh, read this section here. I'm not going to run through it, okay? And like I mentioned many times, the Nahida 250 EM on fuel kill bar will be achieved here via cookie. You can do it with Nahida, but you're going to sacrifice the Tricoma damage. I don't quite recommend that. And our heightened energy generation is simply based on one particle every 1.5 seconds for projection attack, which is effectively every 1.6 seconds anyway. <coughs> Sorry. Hmm. Now, before we look at the overall damage, let me just quickly show you guys the uh, permutation for our item and the stats used. Okay. Yeah, I'm you. Oops, for the remove this. Okay, I think I forgot to remove the Nahida. Oops. Yeah, I'll use Nahida's uh, as a template to create the... Oops. I use Nahida's as, as the template for El Haydn. Because that's like the next closest thing, right? Alright. So basically, this is the permutation that we are looking at. But I'll, sh I'll show you to you this guys this way it's easier okay so I'm looking at 4 GD four different permutations we have e the EM damage with CR we have attack damage with CR we have double EM with CR and we have EM attack CR since he's getting damage bonus uh, from his A4 passive he's getting it from his uh, ascension stat so maybe there's some worth in dropping the damage goblet and go for something like EM attack Kind of balance out or maybe even double em you know stuff like that and since his em skilling got nerfed maybe we should go for attack sense so i'm i'm exploring all these different permutations here now you'll notice that we also have a 2 dm 2 gd but just the em damage cr so that you know i just need to compare this so i can tell you guys the performance difference between 4 gd and 2 dm 2 gd okay more or less so this is the CR stats uh, that you, CR CD stats I'm using. Now the CR is a little higher because of the uh, signature weapon, because you get four percent and eight percent R five, right? <clears throat> so if you think about it this way, without the signature weapon, this target should be something like seventy two or seventy one CR, and likewise for this. Attack isn't the highest really. Uh, more important, I want to show you guys the EM. So just a quick look, right? So this is EM just from your artifacts. Because we are using 4GD, you get 180 EM from that. Use one EM means that and a couple of base EM rows. 80 EM just from base rows. Okay. So with that, plus Nahida E. Oh sorry, Nahida passive. Last signature weapon or two EM upgrade rolls to replace us if you don't have a signature weapon. Plus C2, that actually gives you your 1037. If you don't have C2, then it's 837. Remember what I said earlier where they adjust the C2 to meet the EM perfectly? Yeah, this is the case for EM damage uh, crit circle. Alright, uh, let me move on. Go back to the damage figure comparison. So I'm gonna show I'm gonna do a quick one where we just look at 23 seconds versus 19 seconds for C0 says she one. Just to see whether it's worthwhile doing the 12 second versus the 8 second uh, on fuel time. 
Oh, sorry, not of your time. Projection mirror, projection attack window. So you see damage wise, right? Obviously the 23 second will do better than the 19 seconds, right? We have 1.13 million versus 822k here. And you have the rest of figures uh, for the different artifact plantation. DPS wise, it's also higher for the 23 seconds. Even though it's an additional 4 seconds, the amount of damage we are dealing here gives you high enough damage that it's actually better than 19 seconds. But, but, in those extra 4 seconds where you get your 6k DPS, the biggest problem is that the team DPS falls off severely. Okay, severely. So let me let me just run it run it through run it through you with you guys, okay? Yai is E, who have ended at 20 second mark. So you have three seconds where Yai is not dealing any damage. Which is like at least three of his her E hitting, right? You have Cookies E at the 22 second mark. Ending. And Nahida's E will likely be gone. Because the moment your enemies die, it will probably end even earlier than this. So if I factoring all of the above, I can tell you guys, it's still better to go for the 19 second rotation. Even if you see El Heighten TPS being 6k lower on the 19 second rotation. The thing is, once I think about and I factor in the team DPS, don't forget that they are still, if you have them triggering their damage, they are still going to proc aggravates and spreads. So even if it's lower DPS for El Heighten himself, the 90 second rotation will still give you better in terms of team DPS. If the difference was not just 6k, if the difference was bigger, maybe I'll say that uh, it's worthwhile doing the El Heighten 23 second rotation. But it's not. I mean, for it to be higher is already a very, very good thing for the uh, rotation. It means that your 4 seconds is not being wasted. But that's in terms of our items damage alone. Once you factor in teen TPS, it's actually very bad. I'm very, very confident. Yeah, it's 3E hitting your continuous application of cookie E. Cookie, high EM cookie. With the, uh, what do you call that? The uh, aggravates, right? It's actually okay. She hits like, what, 10k, 14k, with which is not too bad. And then you have Nahida's E, which uh, does like, what, 30 plus k per hit. I can't remember the C0 figure. Yeah, but even C0, it should be something like 20 plus k, right? I mean, if you add all of that, do add that together, divide it by 3, I, tell you it's, I can tell you for sure it's more than 6, 6k. Because 6k in 3 seconds, oh, sorry, 4 seconds, it's 24k. My Yae per hit right now with Aggravate, she's already hitting like what? 40 plus k, 50k? Yeah, she is. I have, no, sorry, it's actually not 40 plus k, 50 plus k. It's higher than that. I've seen 60 plus k before, even 70k. Serious. So, I can tell you, 19 seconds rotation is better. But obviously, if you're gonna use Yae, and Nahida, and somehow their damage is bad. Then you can't blame me for saying that. You, you shouldn't come back to tell me to, me to say that. Uh, it's bad, I should have gone 23 seconds. I I would, I would turn it around and tell you that you need to improve your Yai and Nahida if that's the case. Okay? So I hope the conclusion for the rotation comparison here is very clear. 23 versus 19 seconds, 19 seconds is better. Even though the individual figure is higher for L high term, Team TPS suffers way too much. Okay? Let me make this in red because I'm afraid some folks only look at the figures and then they just conclude that 23 seconds is better. Okay? Now, now that we have gotten 23 and 19 sec 18 seconds, sorry, 19 seconds out of the park, we have done the comparison. Let's look at 19 versus 18 seconds for the all the constellations. Okay? So C0, 19 seconds, C0, C6, 18 seconds, C0, C6. You'll notice that the damage figures are pretty close. So the main thing is the DPS, right? Because one of it has lesser, is lesser by one second. 
So as you see here, this is the DPS figures. I'm going to make it easy. We just look at the percentage differences. Okay. It's not big. Look at C0R1 to C6R1. We're talking about 3% initially. Goes to 4% C2 and then it drops to 1% starting from C3 and C6 to 2%. So 18 second, 18 second rotation is slightly better. It's about 1 to 4% better. But, uh, okay, sorry. Before I go to the but, right? But, sorry. <laughs> it's 6 to resolve the biggest issue of our item. The 2 second wait time that I've been talking about. Because remember my 18 second rotation? Right after Q, you just cast E and do a 2 mirror projection. Instead of wasting time doing normal attacks. Decided to go gung ho and just do the 2 mirror. And... I can tell you guys, if not for the latest changes, I wouldn't even entertain this idea. Because the latest changes, 2 mirror actually got buffed ever so slightly with the 3 mirror dam projection damage, remember? While everything else gets nerfed drastically. <laughs> so yeah, alright. So, but remember that it's still 2 mirror instead of 3 mirror, or even 4 mirror at effect for the C2 and C6. So the difference is still pretty small. It's still 1 to 4%. Uh, in the end, I'll leave it to you guys to decide which rotation you prefer, right? Because I showed you earlier. Uh, don't worry, I'll show you in the TLDR again as well. So it really depends on which rotation you prefer. Maybe for some folks, they prefer using the physical test so that the moment you see your l doing a green slash, right? It means that you are ready. That's another way to look at it. Right? That's another way to look at it. It means that you're ready. Because the three mirrors we have been generated from his cube. Or you can choose not to care about that and just spam E right after, which is this rotation. Hmm. Interesting concept, right? So let me go back. Uh but don't worry. Since I'm the one who came up with the two rotations, obviously I'll test both of them out when our item is released just to see which rotation feels uh, smoother to play. But for my math, I'll use the 18 second rotation moving forward. I can't possibly do this amount of math again for every single future math. Okay, so we'll just go ahead with the 18 seconds since it does have a higher DPS throughout. Although some cases you see 0% here. But it's not red yet, which means that it's still positive 0%. Which means that this is still better than this. 18 seconds is still better than 19 seconds. Okay, so with all of this in mind, right? I talk about 23 second rotation, I talk about 19 second rotation, about 18 second rotation, and a lot more other stuff before that. So what exactly is our high turns performance? You you might have seen a little snippet of it, right? You see, oh, it's only doing 1 million damage at C6. 1.27 million damage, uh, sorry, 1.24 million damage at C6, only 800k at C0, but there's more to it. So, 44 to the 45k at C0 is pretty decent, right? This is your 44.5k, so that's why I say it's like 44 to 45k. I'll say it ranges from average to above average and good if you're considering air grass spread. Why do I say considering air grass spread? Yeah, I'll talk about it later. <laughs> and uh, just bear in mind the 44 to 45 case for the entire rotation, not just his own field time. Okay? He's definitely outperforming Tinari, by the way, who's the only other than Drew main TPS, technically speaking. So, if I look only at their own field time, seven, it's 73k on a C0 L item versus 44k on C0 Tinari huge difference almost double okay not as okay i shouldn't say almost double but it's it's close to almost double yeah double double <laughs> double adjective okay now the reason why i'm doing on field time only is because if i look at overall rotation tinari dps will always look very low because of its quiz of nature and the other thing is that the 44k on c0 tinari is based on my previous math which is having kole rather than nahida as your second de uh, dendro. But even in Nahida's EM buff, it will still be behind higher height up. Okay? The extra 100 plus EM for Nahida's EM buff is not going to bridge a difference of almost 30k. 
So with this, it should be very clear that he will be a good upgrade over Tinari in Agra Spread comps. Especially if I Agra Spread enjoy you're already using Tinari. Like seriously, I, I have respect for people who are using Tinari now. Because it's not easy. And a lot of people trash that he's bad, right? But it's actually not that bad. If you really use him, it's not that bad. In that 7 seconds, he does provide a pretty decent boost or burst or surge in damage. He does. I mean, obviously, if, he, if he's not well built, if you have... If your scenario is not well built, you shouldn't you shouldn't be unfair and say that he's bad, right? But mine is pretty, pretty decently built. And he's doing pretty okay in terms of like providing a surge in damage. Now... I know people are kind of used to seeing like very high damage figures, right? Like on the Wanderer, you, you hit 2 million at C6. You have 1 million plus at C0. But, you gotta remember, the nature of aggro spread is very different from Hyper Carry. Hyper Carry is a comp where most of the damage is happening from that main DPS, while the other characters serve to buff that main DPS. Aggro spread is a comp that focuses on multiple DPS mains rather than just one. This is really because of how Quicken works, right? Quicken is an aura, it's there, and you just apply Electro, you get Aggravate, you apply Dendro, you get Spreads. So it's really meant for multiple DPS mains. And in a comp where you have El Hytem, you have Nahida, you have Yae, a three of them are actually going to do pretty decent or good damage with the Aggro spread. So if you look at overall team DPS, if I factor in if I factor in Yais, I factor in Nahidas, especially if I've been following my math guides for them, the team DPS will actually be very strong. It's easily hitting almost two to three plus million damage. Which I know that some F2P players will say, of course it has to. It's a count with three five star, blah blah blah. But you still need the right synergy, the right five star characters, the right artifacts, etc. To hit that type of figure, okay? But the fact that you are able to do so with El Hytem is good, right? With El Hytem, replacing Tinari, for example, in a grass spread comb, it, it allows you to easily hit almost 2 or 3 plus million damage. And when I say almost 2, that's like C0. When I say 3 plus million damage, that's like C6. In fact, it might be closer to 4 million damage. So you, you get what I'm trying to say here, the team DPS is very very strong for aggro spread. For aggro spread characters, you should not look at only their damage. If you look only at their damage, then your, your expectation of their damage has to drop. It has to be lowered. So for someone like El Hytem doing like 800k at C0, it's actually very impressive. Because in an aggro spread comp, like I said, again and again, it's multiple DPS mains. So, if you ask me about El Hytem performance, it's decent, it's good. In fact, it's not just decent, he's actually very... He will make a, a well-built Agra spread comp even better. The problem I have with El Hytem though, is his constellations. C0 to C6 is a very underwhelming 55%. Which is like our Ayato, who I always bring up when I see a bad C0 to C6, because that's how bad C0 to C6 is. So what this means is that, say, uh, if you're already using Tenari in Agra Spread, or you're maybe using something like Nahida, Kole, or Nahida, DMC, whatever permutation you're doing, right? Once you put a Hytem in with a good support like Nahida, it will be an upgrade. But, I actually wouldn't recommend going beyond C0. Seriously, I think this is the first character that I say just do C0. Okay, there are other characters, but I have I didn't do math guide for those. If you're a long-time viewer of my streams, you know. Although I haven't been able to stream recently. And I actually didn't want to mention this. But after my baby thingy, I actually got another family issue. And this time around, it's involving elderly. Yeah, it's also a medical issue. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's not, not bring that in. I'm just glad that I'm still able to at least provide you guys this math card even though it take, took me uh, longer than usual. But it's okay. What I'm trying to say here is that C0 
L Hytham is actually going to be sufficient if they don't make any further changes to him. Which, honestly speaking, I think they still make changes. So do wait for those before you conclude. And I'll also do an update on one then. But as of now, his C2 or his C6 performance, if you compare to other on-field main TPS, not the, not the damage figure, but just the C2 or C6, like when you go from C2 to C2 or just the individual C2 itself, I can tell you it's borderline bad or simply beat. In fact, being saying simply mid is, is pretty kind. It's really bad on his C2. C6 is is uh is the one that I can say is mid. But even then it's still borderline bad. Yeah. Well, beta is still ongoing. There's a lot of nerfs recently. So I would say chances chances are high we get some positive tweets in future. So it may be mainly constellations. I don't know whether you guys remember or if you have noticed so far. The last wave for changes are all usually constellations. Sometimes the C2, sometimes the C6, or even C1. Seldom the C4. Yeah, seldom on the C4. But I personally am hoping that projection attacks get buffed because right now it's 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 still a little too low to compensate for that two second wait time on Q mirror generation. Which is the most detrimental factor. If not for that 2 second wait time, I wouldn't even think about doing like a... Uh, and yet, even more math on the 18 second rotation. Like, when I saw the 19 second, I wasn't satisfied. I, w I ended up thinking about how to optimize it and I came up with the 18 second. Okay? Now, like I, like I said earlier when I was talking about this, right? Uh, if we do get constellation changes, I'll definitely do a more detailed constellation comparison then. And stay tuned for the TLDR where I'll just... Show you guys the C2 value. <laughs> I know I didn't mention it here, but yeah, I'll talk about it in the TLDR. Okay, now let's uh, go on to the artifact comparison. This is going to be very quick. Very, very straightforward, right? Three figures means that it's worse than 4GD, the EM damage CR population. So EM damage CR is actually the clear winner here. Because you look at the attack sense, you look at the double EM, you look at the EM attack permutation. All of them are falling behind the 4GT by the sorry are falling behind the EM damage CR by quite a fair bit. Like EM attack is so bad, double EM is is bad, but still uh not as bad as uh EM attack. While attack damage CR is the best, but it's still pretty bad because it's like eight to nine to twelve percent difference. To me, that's bad. It has to be something like the 2DM 2GD, but it's ranging from 2 to 3%. Then I'll say that it's like pretty close. So if you can't get good 4GD pieces, it's actually worth you doing 2DM 2GD. Especially if your 2DM pieces are well rolled. Okay, so this, this is the artifact comparison I have for you guys. Very nice and, sh and straightforward and short. Basically, just go for EM DMH CR. Don't bother with the other type of funny uh, main stat permutation because somehow they all don't work. And then you have the 2DM 2GD where it's pretty close but still worse than 4GD. Alright. <coughs> this is what happened. That's why I went on stop, right? Alright, we have come to the TLDR of this very long video. Uh, I hope you guys have been following so far or if you have jumped straight to the TLDR, uh, bear with me going to give you guys the TLDR. So first off, l Hytham has received very heavy nerfs in the most recent changes. Refer to the later changes section for the detail analysis. But essentially, after doing the math, I'll say his performance at Grass Spread is actually still good. Since Aggra Spread is about a hyper carry where DPS mostly come from one source. Especially if you've been following my Aggra Spread guide since 3.0. Now, even with the nerfs, he's still outperforming Tinari. I'll say the nerfs are mostly focused on balancing Balancing with double quotes and shifting focus further to his projection attacks as the main source for his damage. But that being said, I, there are still nerfs that I really dislike, and it's A4 and it's his A4 passive and C2 changes. I won't elaborate further on this because it's already in the detailed section itself. So check that out if you want to know why I really dislike these two changes. Okay. Now moving on, Agra Spreadcom. For this math guide, I will go with our item Nahida Yae Cookie. Budget version will be L Hytham Yao Yao Beto Fisher. If you want to hit the EM cap for his A4 passive, Nahida is pretty much a must. Plus C2 if you are using only E1 EM instead. 
since we are only using Yaiq every two rotation or as and when required, you can also drop Cookie for Zhongli. Because I don't really need an electro battery if you think about it, right? But I'm using Cookie for to hit my 1000 EM. Now, if you want to go further on the DPS, you can even put in a 1000 EM Kasuha or Sucrose to improve the aggravate damage, not the spread damage. But I guess uh, Kazuha with a Freedom Zone can help to buff uh, El Haizen as well. Though not his main source, his, his Dendro infused Nomad Tests are still not too bad, dense to spreads. The spreads that are triggered on the Nomad Tests, still not too bad. So, like I said, it's it's kind of lax. The, the fourth, fourth, uh, fourth option, other than El Haizen, Nahida, Yai, is kind of lax. Cookie, Zhongli. Both over Dory. I'm probably not gonna use Zhongli unless uh, I keep getting interrupted and it hurts me so much that I will switch to Zhongli. Because Cookie really fits the full EM role very well to serve as a character providing the 1000 EM for Nahida's passive. And this is with Sifos. I don't even need to use Nilo Signature. If you don't already know, Nilo Signature can work on Cookie, but uh, it does demand a longer on Filter on Cookie. I've already covered that previously in my math guides. Alright. Yeah, so do refer to the energy session for the details on Sephos versus Fornius 2. Okay. So these are the three rotations I have talked about. Uh basically I can tell you guys up front, at least uh, after I finish one hour of this, right? C2 plus 18 seconds. It's going to be the one I use for my math. Lighting is very, very close. Okay. Oh, and please refer to the specific session for the details on the different rotation, uh, what variants or alternate actions you can do, like when to reapply a Nahida E, for example. All of that is in the actual session itself. So refer to that for details. Likewise, for energy, uh, you, re you can refer to the, the specific session for the details and also a comparison between Sifos and Favonius on Cookie. For L item, the ER target is basically 100 ER on uh, Sifos if Cookie is using Sifos, 110 ER if Cookie is using Four Volumes. Uh, one very very important thing, okay? Please refer to the important notes and assumptions as well as L item means that's an artifact permutation for the details. I'm not doing a TLDR for these two sessions. L Hyten's best rotation amongst the 18 second, 19 second, and 33 second is the 18 second rotation while factoring in Team TPS as well. Okay, very important. Factoring in Team TPS as well, 18 second rotation is the best. If you only do L Hyten, then obviously 33 seconds is the best. But I really, really don't recommend that because uh, your Team TS really falls off a lot. So even at C0, I'm recommending the 18 second. Okay, if it's in case it isn't already clear. What this this TLDR this point here is saying is even at C0 you should use this. You want to know the details? Refer to a specific session on the rotation. Now, what that being said though, 90 second rotation, which is this rotation here, is actually very close behind. So it depends on which rotation feels smoother to play. And I'll test definitely test that out when I have the L high term is available. So in terms of L high terms DPS, right? He isn't like a hyper carry level of uh, figures, his DPS. But if you consider the DPS coming in from Nahida, from Yae, the overall team DPS is team DPS is actually very high. We are talking about like two million, almost two million at C zero, or maybe more than that. They vary really depending on your uh, house that they are. Like for me, I'm pretty sure I can hit two million if all three of them are at C zero. But I actually have a few of them higher than that. My Yai is C6. Yeah. So obviously I'm gonna hit more than that. Even if I have a C0, I'll hide them. But I hope at least you guys can visualize, right? If you have triple C0, it's slightly gonna be like almost 2 million at C0, and then 3 plus or even 4 million at C6. Or C6. And this is over 18 to 22 seconds. Sorry, actually it should be just over 18 million, 18 seconds, right? Yeah, over 18 seconds. So L Hyten is definitely an upgrade over Tinari. Or even any of the other uh current dendro pairing. Like L Hyten Nahida is gonna be your highest aggro spread dendro pair. 
DPS as of now. We're talking about 73k on our item versus 44k on Tinari. Just looking at their on field time at C0. Okay, C0. So if you're an aggressor and enjoy it, I'll tell you guys L Hyten will give you a boost even with the latest nerfs. So he although he received a lot of nerfs and a lot of them are pretty painful, he's actually not nerfed to oblivion. He's just not power creeping like crazy. Can we imagine if he wasn't nerfed? Along with the damage that Nahida and Yae is doing, the aggro spread team DPS is going to be shoot through the roof. Going to be the best call. But, he got nerfed. Why? Because he, his initial figures were just too OP. I'll be straight with you guys. His initial figures were too OP. Nerf is expected. The only thing is that because they did a lot of nerfs at the same time, so it feels painful. But my biggest complaint for our item will be our, how bad constellations are. C0, C6, very underwhelming, 55%. And then let me let me sh let me re let me emphasize this, okay? C2 alone is a measly 12%, okay? Only 12%. And C1 is 0% in my map because it's QL slash situation, right? Like all it does is to help you extend a little of your uh, mirror projection attack duration if that's all you need to clear the last few dreads or mobs. So in other words, C1 to C2, oh sorry, C0 to C2, that's what I'm trying to say here. C0 to C2 only gives you 12%. That's very bad. When typically characters most characters will get two to three times that when you go from C0 to C2. So that's why if there are no further changes to his concession or death or to his his kit per se, I would just recommend to stay at C0, even if you have a spender. Even if you have a wheel, okay, anyway, some wheels wouldn't care. But if you have a value-oriented wheel, which is would be the reason why you will watch my math guides, then yeah, I'll say C0 after is good enough. If they don't do anything to El Hyder now, I will advise wheels just stay at C0. It's really good enough. Obviously, wheels will still spend. Yeah. So, anyway. Well, beta is still ongoing. And given so many nerfs recently, I'll say chances are high that we get some positive twists in future. But it may be mainly constellations. If you have noticed so far, the last wave of changes are usually constellations. And we're already on like the second wave of beta ending, right? So third wave of beta will be next week, and that should be like your last wave of changes. Generally speaking. So I am, personally, I'm hoping that projection attacks get buffed, because currently it's too low to compensate for that two second wait time on the Q mirror generation. But if we do get constellation changes, I'll do a more detailed constellation comparison then. I know that I didn't do it this video, but I have way too many sessions in this video already, alright? Okay, last point, which is the artifact comparison. The two key summary points will be EM damage CI is the best presentation. You go attack sense, double EM, attack plus EM means that these are all significantly worse. Now, 2 DM, 2 GD is actually very close to 4 GD. If you don't have good 4 GD pieces but very good 2 DM pieces, go for it. Because you, you are farming these two in the same domain. It's, like, it's highly probable that you have good stats on the one that you're not, technically speaking, you're not really farming for. So it's good news that 2DM, 2GD is very close to 4GD. Oh, but bear in mind that this, this is very close to 4GD is assuming that you still get 700 plus EM. At least 700 plus EM, okay? With a C0 R item and 2M, 2DM, 2GD. So let's break it down, right? 2DM, 2GD, 80 EM. Uh, then you have your main step, which is 187. You have about 80 EM from base rows. So what does that give you? Uh, about 327 EM, maybe a bit more. And then you have your Nahida EM buff, your Dendro Resonance buff, uh, a few EM upgrades or Nahida Sinshu happen. You are able to get 700 plus EM. I've done the math. You are able to get, you actually get something like 757, I think, based on my math. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say here is that your EM has to be around this value in order for 2G DM, 2GD. 2DM, 2GD, we have a very close performance to 4GD. Okay? Yes, I finished the video. <laughs> so technically speaking, I actually did like two here. I have the aggro spread comp and the artifact comparison done. I don't think I will do more artifact comparisons. 
because his uh, damage mainly coming from E, not really like an NA or CA character, so there's no need to evaluate stuff like Gladiator. And it's really between 4GD and 2DM, 2GD. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you use 4DM if you don't have any other 4DM characters. But you should have because it's an Agra spread comp. Agra spread comp to me, uh, the best is always like double, deal, double Dendro, double Electro. And obviously, you put the, the DPS characters for these two elements. Now, if you didn't, if you only want to lose one of these elements, then you, though that I'm gonna assume that that one element is actually should be a support character. Should be a support or sub DPS, and then you can afford to do someone else like Zhongli or Kazuha if you're main focusing is aggravate and not spread. But I, I think that gives you a rough idea, okay? So this will be what is coming next: weapon comparison and constellation, and probably one uh one uh, video next week when they do update the changes maybe we'll do an updated map guide yeah all right so i know this video is very long i hope i and oh, let me really really thank you if you've been following the video i know it's long and i personally thought of splitting it into different sections but it kind of still feels broken if i do that which is the reason why i stuck with it and just did a long video okay so yep I hope the content is helpful to you guys. If you like the content, remember my video and click subscribe for more. Try to go show the rotation. Wait, wait, wait. It should be here. Yeah. So these are three rotations. And if you have been following my math guides, this is the one I would recommend. Even at C0. Okay. Alright, if you oh sorry, I was saying I interrupted myself, right? So if you like the content, remember my video and click subscribe for more. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll end the video here. Bye.